Hello everyone and thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Today I will be discussing the myth of the SKS slam fire. For those who aren't aware, there's a persistent claim among many corners of the North American gun collecting community that the SKS carbine in its original military configuration is fundamentally unsafe and in fact requires modification to be responsibly fired in the modern era. This claim emphasizes the fact that almost all SKS pattern carbines utilize a free floating firing pin design. And there are documented cases in which SKS type rifles have slam fired, sometimes resulting in uncontrolled fully automatic fire. For this reason, there are many who very confidently advocate replacing the free floating firing pin of an SKS with an aftermarket spring loaded firing pin. If you haven't guessed already, by the title of this video and my vaguely condescending tone, I'm gonna to spend the remainder of this video articulating why I believe that this perspective is foolish and ultimately reflects a total failure to understand basic firearm operation. If that interests you, stay tuned because we're gonna get into it right now. So the first thing we need to do is define and provide context for what exactly is a free floating firing pin. A free-floating firing pin is a firing pin which is not subject to constant resistance, such as spring pressure. Although there are mechanical hard stops which limit its forward and rearward travel within the firing pin channel, there is nothing holding it in any particular position within that range. It's free-floating. A pretty easy trick for identifying a free floating firing pin is to shake a bolt or bolt carrier assembly and see if that firing pin rattles around. If it does, you've got yourself a free floating firing pin. Now let's dive a little bit deeper to what that really means in practice. And in doing so, I'm gonna be handling a live firearm. So as a quick, hopefully redundant reminder, the four rules of firearm safety apply all the time, no matter who you are, and I'm certainly gonna be applying them here. A free floating firing pin means that if I take this weapon and I load around and I hold this weapon upside down, that firing pin is now resting on a live primer. It also means that if I take this weapon and shake it up and down, that firing pin was just bouncing on a live primer. You wanna know the really crazy thing? It means that when I chambered that round right in front of you, the firing pin hit that primer with so much inertial force that it actually dented the primer. Now, if this is the first time that any of this has been explained to you, you would be totally correct to be getting a little nervous right now. Anyone with two brain cells to rub together should be on heightened alert when firing pins are touching primers in a weapon which is not intended to be immediately fired. There is no safety feature between a primer and a muzzle, and if the primer of a chamber round detonates, that weapon will fire and unintentional firearm discharges are enormously hazardous. Here's the thing though, just because something seems potentially unsafe in concept does not mean that it's unsafe in practice. We've got this great tool called math, which lets us objectively evaluate the forces involved in the detonation of a primer and reliably predict the outcome of interactions between mechanical firearm elements. Using that information, engineers have determined that it's actually pretty easy to calibrate the mass of a free-floating firing pin such that it will reliably transfer the kinetic energy of a released hammer to a primer, but will not, even under extreme circumstances, be capable of generating enough kinetic energy to ignite a primer by way of inertia alone. Now, astute viewers may have noticed that I just said engineers and not engineer. The reason for this is because the free-floating firing pin is in no way specific to Sergei Simonov or the SKS, but is in fact the most proven and popular firing pin design for military small arms globally, and has been for some time now. U.S. Army M4 and M16 pattern weapons use free-floating firing pins. So do many Kalashnikovs. Even the venerable M1 Garand has a free-floating firing pin. Don't believe me? Just listen. Free floating firing pins. And yes, they dent primers too. So make no mistake, 
There is nothing inherently wrong with a free-floating firing pin. It's not some reckless shortcut taken by the Soviets 80 years ago. It's a core small arm technology, tried and true the world over. So why on earth, you ask, do so many people have a problem with the free-floating firing pin in an SKS, but no problem at all with the free-floating firing pin in an AR? Perhaps an even better question is, why are there so many reports of SKS pattern carbines slam firing or going full auto when such things don't seem to be an issue for similar designs? Well, in order to answer those questions, we need to define one more term, and that term is slam fire. A slam fire is when the kinetic energy of a firearm's action closing directly results in the weapon firing. Depending on the weapon system, there are a few precise modes by which this can occur, but in the case of the SKS, the slam is coming from the recoil spring, propelling the bolt carrier assembly from the rear of the action to the front of the action, either due to manual release of the bolt hold open or during the normal cycle of live fire. Normally, of course, this would not cause a round to fire, but under very specific circumstances, it can, and I'll elaborate on that in just a moment. First, however, I have a question for viewers to ponder at home. If you've accepted my premise that there is nothing mechanically unique or unsafe about the SKS's operating system, what else could be going on? And what variable is unique to the SKS as compared to just about any other auto-loading rifle in the US? Did you say Cosmoline? If so, I think you just cracked this thing wide open. A significant number of SKS pattern carbines in the United States today entered the country packed in cosmoline, an extremely high viscosity preservative grease, traditionally used in Eastern Bloc countries who have not yet adopted Western technologies such as plastic bags. Obviously I'm teasing just a little bit here. When used properly, cosmoline is a perfectly viable uh, firearm storage solution, but we really need to emphasize that it is a storage solution, not some magic multi-purpose weapon coating. An SKS stored in cosmoline should be considered no more operational than an M4 in a sealed plastic bag. Cosmoline, like any other packaging material, must be fully removed from the working components of a firearm before that firearm is considered operational, and failure to do so presents substantial risk of harm. When cosmoline is present in the chamber, bore, or gas system of a firearm, it can reduce the volume of the system and consequently increase the pressure, sometimes to the point of catastrophic failure. This has happened. When cosmoline is present in the firing mechanism, it can cause sluggishness or delays, potentially resulting in failures to fire or even hang fire type situations. This has happened too. And yes, when cosmoline is present in a firing pin channel, it can and has caused SKSs to slam fire. Here's how. Remember how when I was explaining free-floating firing pin designs, I said that safety is ensured by keeping the firing pin mass below the minimum threshold needed to detonate a primer through its own inertia? Well, that only works when the firing pin is truly free-floating. Guess what happens when you pack a firing pin channel with high viscosity grease. You create a friction coefficient between an eight and a half gram firing pin and a 125 gram bolt. This means that some of the mass of the bolt is now included in the kinetic energy equation for the force with which the firing pin can hit the primer. And the risk of that primer detonating goes up dramatically. If that cosmoline is hardened and that firing pin happens to be stuck in the forward position, you've basically got a crude but serviceable slam fire submachine gun design at this point. And if you drop that bolt on a live round with rounds in the magazine, that thing is absolutely gonna keep ripping rounds down range until you're out of ammo or the weapon jams, most likely the latter. Whatever you happen to be doing with the trigger doesn't really matter at that point because the energy being used to set those rounds off isn't coming from the fire control group. It's coming from the recoil spring and the recoil spring does not have a disconnector. So it's cosmoline, not a free-floating firing pin, which has caused the SKS to develop a reputation for slam firing and runaway fire. Whether due to ignorance or complete incompetence, a select population of North American Darwin Award candidates has opted to pull the trigger on SKS pattern carbines without confirming that the weapon has transitioned from long-term storage to operational status. This has nothing to do with the design of the SKS and everything to do with the procedures associated with Eastern Bloc weapon storage. 
Believe me, if Smith & Wesson and Colt sold brand new SKS patterns at Bass Pro Shop and AR-15s came in Cosmoline-packed pallets from Albanian warehouses, you better believe those weapons' reputation for safety would reverse overnight. You'd have internet gun experts telling you that the AR-15 isn't safe until you swap out the firing pin in the gas tube, all because 5% of gun owners are morons and would rather blame an inanimate object for their own incompetence rather than admit that they aren't actually as responsible of firearm owners as they like to think. So with that, let's go ahead and segue to what responsible SKS ownership does look like. In addition to deferring to common sense and the universal rules of firearm safety, how do you keep yourself and those around you safe while operating an SKS pattern rifle? The good news is that it's super easy. Anytime you acquire a new SKS pattern carbine, detail strip it and verify the cosmoline has been fully and properly removed. The particular areas of concern are going to be the chamber and the bore which can be inspected with a flashlight. The gas block, the gas tube, and the gas piston, which again, the internals can be inspected with a flashlight. The fire control group, which can be removed from the weapon and easily inspected in broad daylight. And most importantly, the firing pin and firing pin channel. You will want to detail strip the bolt and inspect that channel with a flashlight the first time, but once you've done that, you're good to go. Moving forward, a simple shake test is all you need to let you know you're in business. As long as you don't feel it sticking, you hear a suctiony noise, or you feel the firing pin is hitting um, kind of cushioned on the ends, you're good to go. Once you've established that weapon is clear of cosmoline, you're set. Periodically removing carbon and normal residue from firing is a good idea, but really not any more important than it would be with any other auto-loading firearm. Honestly, SKS patterns are actually pretty famous for how long they can go without cleaning and preventative maintenance. It's not like you're putting anyone at risk by going 500 rounds without cleaning your rifle, and Lord knows that people go 5,000 rounds all the time without consequence. Additionally, it should be noted that exposure of the bolt to corrosive elements, such as corrosive 762 by 39 ammunition, or certain environmental conditions for that matter, can lead to serious safety concerns, including slam fires if the firing pin is allowed to rust in the forward position. But this is true of all firearms, or almost all firearms, and is in no way specific to the SKS. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, this is all well and good, it's nice to hear someone's contrary opinion, but I'd still rather be overly cautious and install a spring-loaded firing pin just to be safe, I would still advise you against that. Honestly, in a well-maintained SKS, I think the so-called enhanced firing pins are more likely to cause or conceal a hazard as they are to prevent one. Spring coils naturally trap debris, and if that spring breaks, it becomes debris itself. Foreign material in the firing pin channel is exactly the condition we were trying to avoid. Additionally, SKS owner's best tool in rapidly determining whether or not a firing pin channel is clear is the shake test. And if the firing pin is under constant spring tension, you can't perform a shake test and won't be able to tell whether or not that channel is clear without detail stripping the bolt. Honestly, it just doesn't seem like a good trade. That segues us into my final point in this video, which is the history of the so-called enhanced firing pin. It's not a new innovation, and in fact, the company which sells it proudly points out that it is based on the original pre-1951 SKS-45 firing pin design. Why they would want to advertise the fact that their product is literally a rejected and phased out feature, I cannot claim to understand. It'd be one thing if they were claiming to introduce new technology to an old design, but they are literally admitting that every country that tested, manufactured, issued, and fought with these rifles knew that their part existed and universally chose against using it. Lest we get confused about which rifle design we're talking about, by the way, the SKS is the third most produced auto-loading rifle platform in history and one of the most combat-tested weapon systems in all time. Every single cut of every single component on this weapon has been evaluated by multiple committees at one time or another. If changing the dimensions of the firing pin and adding a spring that cost less than a penny to manufacture in bulk would have been a positive change, someone would have done it. Instead, they did the opposite and they took that part out. 
Say what you will about the commies, but they know how to build a weapon that works. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you watching and I love to see your thoughts in the comments. This video uh, is entirely based on a question that I received in the comments. So um, if you have any SKS related questions or just questions in general, uh, please ask me because it might just give me the inspiration to make the next video. Um, if you do like the stuff, uh, I greatly appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button. If you want to see more SKS or general firearm content, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Reading my script, reading my script. Either way, I really appreciate you taking the time to join me for this video, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Thanks again.